Hi, welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. My name is Joanna and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Peak Lab. In this video, I'll be analysing a past year examination question from the topic of magnets. I've placed this question in a handout and you may download it for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. So let's get started. John hung magnet X from a spring. He placed two objects F and G one at a time directly under magnet X. And the diagrams below show his observations. So this is the diagram that shows us that magnet X is hanging from a spring. Now look at what happened when we place object F directly under magnet X. Look at the length of the spring. From 5 cm, it remained at 5 cm. So did the length of the spring become longer? No. Did the length of the spring become shorter? No as well. So magnet X did not move up, it did not move down. It remained in its same position, which means the magnet did not attract or repel object F. So let's write down, did not attract or repel. And therefore, there was no interaction between the two objects. So what can we conclude about object F since there was no interaction? Could object F be a magnet? Now, if it was a magnet, it would have either attracted or repelled. However, we did not see that happening. There was in fact no interaction at all, which means F is not a magnet. Could F be a magnetic material? Now, if F was a magnetic material, what would have happened? F would have been attracted to magnet X and this would cause magnet X to move towards it, right? But did that happen? No, we did not see that happening. And like what we said earlier, there was no interaction at all. So what can we conclude about object F? Object F has to be a non-magnetic material. So do take note, when an object does not have any interaction with a magnet, we can conclude that the object is a non-magnetic material. Next, let's look at what happened in the third diagram. When object G was placed underneath of magnet X, look at what happened to the spring. From 5 cm, it became 7 cm. The spring became longer. How come longer? Did magnet X move up or down? Yes, magnet X would have moved downwards and towards object G. And this shows the magnet has been attracted to object G. So what can object G be? Can we say that it is a non-magnetic material this time? We cannot because there was an interaction over here. The magnet moved downwards and it attracted object G. So G cannot be a non-magnetic material. Could object G be a magnetic material? Yes, why yes? Magnets attract what kind of materials? That's right, magnets attract magnetic materials. So G could be a magnetic material. Now, could G be a magnet? Remember, two magnets facing each other can either attract or repel. In this case, they have attracted, which means what kind of poles were facing each other? Yes, they could be unlike poles facing each other. And unlike poles of two magnets facing each other can cause them to attract. So in conclusion, object G could either be a magnetic material or it could be a magnet as well. So there are two possibilities. With that, let's look at part A. Indicate the properties of the materials that object F and G are made of in the table below. So we are supposed to put a tick in the correct boxes. So for object F, we have concluded that it is made of a non-magnetic material. So we can tick non-magnetic for object F. What about object G? This is where students make the mistake. Since we cannot for sure say whether object G is a magnet, or just a magnetic material, some of you may think not possible to tell. 
However, read the question properly. It says, indicate the properties of the materials that object F and G are made of. And magnets are made of? That's right, made of magnetic material. Hence, object G, irregardless of whether is it a magnet or a magnetic material, both ways, G is still made of a magnetic material. Therefore, we should take magnetic material instead. Next, when John placed object H under magnet X, he observed that magnet X moved up. And if you look at the diagram, the spring from 5cm became 4cm, which means the spring became shorter. How come the spring became shorter? Yes, the magnet had moved Upwards, just like what the question have said. And why would the magnet move upwards the moment we place object H under the magnet? Which means the magnet had repelled. As soon as we see repulsion, we can conclude that the other object is definitely a magnet. Why are we so sure H is a magnet? Because only magnets can repel. And specifically, with what kind of poles facing each other? Yes, with like poles facing each other. So do take note, only magnets with like poles facing each other can repel. Hence, object H definitely has to be a magnet. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out the other videos we made, click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!